University in Nanking, China, and at the University of Pennsylvania and Columbia University. And when we met in 1980 uh, in Nanking, I was very surprised to learn that I could go all the way to Nanking, China and find somebody that went to the University of Pennsylvania and Columbia University like I did, and we did the secret handshakes and sang alumni songs for hours. <laughs> So obviously he's he's very well educated and he's he's uh, been for quite a while professor of architecture at the Nanking Institute of Technology, where he's also responsible for the architectural design program and the program in, uh, for architecture of graduate students. Uh, professor Liu has been a director of the uh, Jiangsu chapter of the China Society of Architects and an advisor to the Nanking City Planning Commission and designed and built cities and housing projects and institutional buildings and factories. Uh, throughout China and has written a number of publications. The most recent one published in 1982 is called uh, Beijing, a cornucopia of classical Chinese architecture, which is available here, I believe, in our bookstore. I have a copy in my office and it's just an exquisite volume. And as far as I know, he's in the process of writing a couple more books. Um, he's been um, asked to lecture in uh, London and will go there uh, to England at the end of this year. He's been there before to lecture. He's lectured in Singapore and throughout the United States. Uh, his wife is here with him. She's also a professor of architecture at the Nanking Institute of Technology. Mrs. Long see you. There aren't many of you who could tell that my pronunciation is that bad, but um, it's not too good. Uh, in any case, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to have both of them here. They visited uh, Ball State University in the fall of 1980, right after our trip to China, and uh, with a one-year delay, we're able to join us again this year uh, for Professor Liu to be visiting Professor of Architecture. And uh, I think Ball State University is very lucky to have both of them here. And um, without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce um, Professor Liu, and the title of this talk tonight is Peking of the Forbidden Inside the Forbidden City. Professor Liu. It's important to ask if they can hear you. Oh, yes? Well, thank you very much, Marvin. And ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, the topic here is the Inside the Forbidden City. Um, I'm glad to be here again after an interval of three years. Uh, three years ago I was here, I wanted to uh, present the Forbidden City, but I didn't have the time to do that because I only stayed here for two days, right? two days only. And uh, now I'm also glad to be here to present the Forbidden City to you, so I'm just to make it up to you. And with 30% more. Why? I think it's because I was um, influenced by the American high interest rate. It's 30% more than I should say, have said uh, three years ago. I think it's 10% per annum. Well, and another thing I'd like to apologize for, I just had a huge dinner that was uh, supplied by Marco Polo. Marco Polo went to Peking and he brought that with him macaroni and spaghetti. I had plenty of spaghetti this evening. And uh, every time I had a huge dinner, I fell to sleep right away. So if I fell to sleep, don't wake me up. <laughs> I think I can just speak in my sleep. And if, uh, if you go to sleep, I won't wake you up. So I'm going to present the inside the Forbidden City now. Why I choose the subject was there's some other reasons. One of the reasons is um, it is the best Ming and Qing dynasty architecture. And it's a uh, typical Chinese, has a typical Chinese principles. And um, it is the Chinese classical buildings at its best. And it is well preserved. The first time it built, was built it was in the 15th century. And um, 15th century, I think it's just that uh, uh, 1416 they started to build it. 
and to the Ming Dynasty built that for uh, more, uh, more than 200 years, nearly 300 years. And uh, after that, the Qing Dynasty overthrown the Ming Dynasty and they continue to build that uh, forbidden city. And we have to enter the turn of this century. And all the buildings are well planned beforehand and um, with a consistent in planning, the planning principle and the design principle. So it is really a unique and uh, has a unified character. And also it is the largest uh, uh, palace building in the world. So if you know the uh, Forbidden City, the architecture of the Forbidden City and all the buildings there, you know uh, more about Chinese architecture. That's why I want to start my, uh, maybe I can deliver some lectures uh, next uh, quarter, but I like to start this uh, inside the Forbidden City tonight. And uh, why it is called Forbidden? That was during the Ming and Qing dynasty. Uh, only the emperor and his beautiful wives, I was told that he had 3,000 of them. Well, that's not too many for an uh, emperor. And, uh, and his eunuchs may be the same member. And uh, you say that eunuchs, the man eunuchs, okay. And uh, a few courtiers, they can get access to him. Many of the common folks or minor officers can get into this palace uh, or get near the palace, so they call it as a forbidden city. Uh, since the uh, founding of the Republic of China by Dr. Sun Yat-sen, and uh, he overthrown that uh, uh, Qin Dynasty, and the royal families moved out from uh, the forbidden city. Now the forbidden city was made a palace museum. Almost everybody can go to any place in uh, the, the palace assemble. But I get some special permission to go some places that not uh, was access to everybody. And I'm going to share that part uh, with you this evening as an interest rate, part of the interest. Now, shall we begin? I turn off the light, please. This two words is Gu Gong, that means palace, the ancient palace. And the, the other one, that's uh, that uh, Ming and Qing dynasty uh, Peking city plan. And here, the yellow part is the uh, forbidden city. And from this, we can see that the northern portion of this uh, big city uh, is called inner city. And inside the inner city is imperial city, uh, this portion. And inside of imperial city, that's the uh, forbidden city, that's this portion. And usually, people thought that for, uh, Forbidden city start from Da Qingmen, that's here. But it is not, actually, it is started from uh, here. But I shall start from here. You see, at this Da Qingmen, that's at uh, the southern part of the inner city, and uh, which, is, uh, which has a long approach, narrow approach, leading to Tiananmen Square. And this square widened at this portion, and so it has a very nice proportion with the size of Tiananmen uh, Gateway. And in the Ming and Qing Dynasty, this portion and this portion, there were ministers, ministries uh, of the Qing Dynasty and Ming Dynasty. And uh, inside of the, at this portion, I'd like to say a few words more, because it was changed during uh, the fun, after the founding of the People's Republic of China. Somebody high above imposed, I mean, uh, he wanted to have a large square just before this, uh, this gateway. So he commissioned the architects, or uh, rather, I rather say that he ordered them to make it the largest square in the world. 
So in one of the conventions, there are meetings, uh, about half a million people can gather here. So the entire scale of that uh, ensemble or the approach to Tiananmen was lost. And um, those people, well, they think they like to have something monumentality and great. They thought uh, big is great and great is monumentality. I think that's wrong. The next please. So oh, I can do that. Okay. Now this is a Tiananmen Square at the present time. Of course, it's not a bird's eye view. Nobody can take a bird's eye view because uh, was well, still forbidden. Some part of uh, near this place still forbidden. And you can see this is the Tiananmen, and right after that, another gateway, another one, and that's the Meridian Gateway, and the furthermost is a hill called Prospect Hill. And here is a monument uh, erected in 1955. And this is the Tiananmen Square. If you look at uh, this portion, the plan, and uh, the forbidden city starts from here until this portion. And here is that uh, Da Qingmen, which is the southern gateway to uh, uh, the imperial city. And you can see in the Ming and Qing dynasty, this is a narrow approach with covered verandas at both sides. And the square, the space only opens up at this place. place. And here is the Tiananmen Gate with uh, the golden water stream running across it. And uh, it has a very nice scale and proportion with the gateway. And right after that, uh, the architectural sequence after Tiananmen is another courtyard here. And it is a, a rectangular courtyard. After this rectangular courtyard is another gatehouse called Duangmen. And after Duangmen, it's a long and uh, comparatively in proportion a narrow uh, courtyard. And here is the Meridian Gateway. And actually, this is the gateway to the Forbidden City, which I shall uh, show you in slides later. And after that, there's a large square. That's, so here is the first climax. And uh, we have a transition here. And uh, through that, we have a second climax. And there's another transition here, and pause, and that's the climax. That's a main hall, a throne hall of the Forbidden City. And this throne hall is the, not only the aesthetic climax, but it is also the functional uh, climax of uh, the Forbidden City. Here we call this the three great house, with uh, one, two, three. And after that, that's the inner court, that's the private part of uh, the emperors. And the emperor's office is here, and he get married in this small building, and he stayed in the uh, chamber is at this part. So it is the, called the inner court. And after that, there's uh, a small garden, that's the imperial garden. After this garden, then that's uh, the northern gateway. So from uh, Tiananmen to the northern part, there are 11 high buildings and eight big courtyards. This building, this uh, complex or the ensemble has said, uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, Chinese planning principles it shows. And uh, it's just like a Chinese courtyard horse, but um, uh, many times enlarged. And the axis is from south to north. That's, that's the uh, uh, best orientation is to face in south because they get in the uh, southern sun in winter and the cool breeze from uh, in the summertime. So with a smaller courtyard and house and offices at both sides. And you can see the units and uh, the, his uh, 3,000 wives live, live in those quarters. And uh, at the 
you call the right side. But uh, in Chinese, the, suppose the emperor sit here. So it uh, is the emperor's left side, that's the ancestral hall. Chinese are ancestral, uh, ancestral worshippers. So the ancestral hall is a, a place at the most important uh, place, that's at the left instead of at the right. And here is another uh, series of halls now was made uh, as a public park called Zhongshan Park. So here we can see the sequ architecture sequence from Da Qingmen through a, a narrow approach to a small square, and after the squares and house, house, uh, squares and house. And the house always situated at that uh, north part of the courtyard, always like that, north part, or in between courtyards, like this one, in between courtyards. And the side house, at uh, either side, with, uh, symmetrical, always, uh, uh, and also uh, with uh, minor access across this. So this is the planning principle for Chinese house, for Chinese palace, and also for the city. You can see that at both sides, there were uh, houses for mining officers and officers. And um, also, this forbidden city was enclosed by a high walls, heavy walls made of brick. They were 36 feet high. And with a moat, 162 feet high. And why I say it is the largest palace? Because it is from east to west. It's 200, no, 2,500 uh, uh, feet. And from north to south, it was 3,200 feet. So it is the largest uh, uh, palace in the world. Unlike the French palace or the English palace, they have the all everything, all the office and living quarters and banquet housing just under one roof. In here, every building has its own function. So there are a lot of buildings, a lot of uh, house, and they were connected by uh, covered verandas and alleys and the lands all enclosed by uh, smaller walls. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, uh, here's uh, so some picture of the present day Tiananmen Square. You can see the great distance. So people really don't care to go there. Of course, so many people just go there to take pictures with the Tiananmen gateway as the uh, background. It holds uh, five million people, and so it was very windy in the uh, winter time and uh, burning in summer time. Now they are going to remodel that. And here's some view of the Tiananmen uh, Gateway. Here's uh, from the west to the south. You can see the Tiananmen here, and with a moat in front of it. And here. Uh, we can see that the best part in Tiananmen is not, the, uh, not only the buildings above this uh, platform, it's the moat. And here you can see the moat, the reflection mirrored in this uh, uh, canal. And with the five dragon uh, bridges across this uh, uh, Tiananmen Square, and across this canal. I think uh, in the old days, the master builders they not only wanted to have a monumental uh, gatehouse, but they also used this reflection in the moat to enhance it, to make it more monumental. At either side of this uh, Tiananmen's uh, gateway uh, is a marble pillar. It's called Hua Biao. And it was decorated, it's made of white marble, and it's decorated uh, with uh, a dragon uh, twined above it and with cloud design. And here, two wing like uh, plates is also uh, representing the cloud. Above that is a, a very mystic animal. It's uh, with a dragon head and with a tail, like a lion's tail. And um, it is called Hua Biao. Hua Biao is not for decorative purpose. Some of the English books said it is for decoration. Actually, it has another meaning. That is, 
the, the common people, if they have anything to express and to send a petition to the emperor, and they cannot approach the emperor, so they just post their uh, petitions uh, on this column, and uh, some of the guards will take this petition, supposed to take to the emperor, and the uh, emperor will know what the people uh, thinks. Uh, in those days, but actually nobody dares to come here and post their petition. I used to think it's just like to tell the mouse to tie a bell under the lack of a cat. And so the, the mouse hear the tinker of the bells and they can flee away. But actually, who's going to do that? And here we see that's the Duanman, the second gateway, that's a transitional uh, a piece of architecture. And Dama has a double eave roof, yellow uh, tile, and uh, from the side it's really nice to see. This is taken from Zhongshan Gongyuan, that's a park at the west side. You can see that there is a, a covered uh, veranda in front of that, and after that you can see the uh, gable end at this portion. Gable end, it was uh, uh, elaborately decorated. And at the eastern part of uh, this portion is the ancestral hall. And uh, at the corner of that, uh, uh, four corners of the uh, city wall is the pavilion. And in China, that's uh, only the noblest or the highest order uh, building can use heat proof, like this one. And uh, especially with a double heat proof and uh, with three terraces at this portion. That's because uh, they are ancestor worshippers. So they, their ancestors can have uh, the uh, highest order roof form and also with three tiers of uh, platforms. And this, of course, this one has all the character of uh, classical Chinese architecture with a double roof, heat roof, and gray tile, and three tiers of white marble plat platforms. And the corner tower, I think, is really very beautiful. It makes a very complicated roof. Actually, the roof, you could make it very simple, just a square roof on top of that, or just a pyramidal roof. But the masters, they make it with particles to uh, each side, to uh, uh, each uh, uh, open to the all four sides, and with a small particle in front of that. And above that, they make another a bigger roof. And on top of that, it's a cross ridge. So the ridge is like a cross in plan. And so they have a four gable ends instead of a, just a simple hip roof. And uh, it's a really spectacular to see. Now we come to the Meridian Gateway. Meridian Gateway, because it's right at the center and it's in the axis of from north to south. It is the gateway to the Forbidden City. And uh, it, was, it has a U-shaped plan, and the uh, width of this from the southern part is 300 feet from here to there. And on top of this wall, there were five pavilions. One, two, three, four, five. So it is sometimes it is called uh, a gate, gateway or gatehouse of five phoenixes, phoenix. And this is the place I used to have some, uh, I, every time I go there, I feel rather oppressive because of the high and massive uh, walls and closed it. It was the place the emperor sometimes he came here to issue edicts. But sometimes he just stayed down because he uh, he doesn't like to he didn't like to spend all his energy climbing up to this part. So some of the high ministers they can come here and read the edicts of the emperor. Also, this the place uh, for the rebels. If they captured rebels, they bring those uh, cultured rebels to this place and have the. Uh, then executed at this place. So it is rather impressive and, uh, and also oppressive. On top of that, well, this, uh, this portion uh, is a lot for the common folks. I got a special permission to go up there. 
But if you are going to Peking or Beijing, as we call that, and uh, try to get a special permission to get up to this part, because on this portion you can have a, a bird's eye view of that uh, whole uh, complex. And here you see there's a ramp leads up to the uh, whole of the pavilions right in the middle. And also you can see from the north, you can see Dongmen, and uh, also another uh, pavilion at this end. <coughs> and here, on top of this uh, platform, we can see that uh, uh, beam decoration. This beam decoration is different from any other portion. It's a simplified uh, painted beam. So this part is not painted by uh, any patterns. So it is a special kind of uh, painted beam decoration. And uh, from the back of the diamond, uh, well, the, this uh, beam is somewhere here. And, no, I'm sorry, somewhere here. And uh, on the back is a big courtyard which has another golden water stream uh, run, flows uh, through this portion. Now here is that uh, uh, plan of this portion. The meridian gateway is here. It's uh, the golden water running from west to uh, east uh, within a curved and bow-like form. Uh, it is curious to see that uh, in a very uh, symmetrical and the rectangular space, they have uh, this kind of winding stream uh, running in it. It has a baroque, baroque look, I sometimes think, and uh, it has, it's so dynamic, and they suggest a movement from this portion to that portion. And also, you can see that the beautiful uh, reflection of the water straight above and the, in the water. So it is uh, really uh, beautiful to see, and also in a very uh, uh, monumental place uh, with a winding stream uh, inside, and it, it relieves the austerity of this uh, uh, the monumentality. Here on top of that uh, 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 Meridian Gateway, we can see all five bridges. They were close together, so to make it so approximate, and uh, so that it ex really accentuate the main axis leading from here to other portion. And you can see that the beautiful broad street all made of white marble, and the winding stream with the reflections and the rhythmic broad street and its uh, post. This is uh, taken on top from the top of the platform. And here are some other, uh, from that, uh, on top of the platform of Meridian Gateway, not only we can see that uh, another transitional space, that's the Tai He Men, leads, there's a transitional space, Tai He Men, and then leads to the great tower in this uh, building complex, which is the Tai He Dian, or the, the Hall of Supreme Harmony. This is a direct translation. And uh, in front of Tai He Men, there are some uh, things. There are two bronze lions here, and also a sports, uh, like building-like uh, sculpture, which was used as a measurement. So that means that the, uh, it's a standard um, measure for volume. And here we can see from this elevation, Tai Ho Men in the middle, which has a double half, if, half uh, hip roof, like this. And uh, because it is only a transitional building, it's a hall, so they cannot uh, use a uh, hip roof here. And it's double roof because it's an um, uh, important gateway leads to the most important hall behind. And uh, here we have uh, five buildings. That's the Tai He Dian, I'm going to show you later. Here's uh, two uh, uh, other views of Tai He Dian. And through this Tai He Men, 
we can see the Taiho Dian behind it. And that's the greatest uh, hall in this ensemble. And here from the other side, we can also see this Taiho Dian. And uh, if you look to the north from the platform, you can have catch a view of the white stupa, or uh, somebody called the high, white uh, dagoba. That's uh, in the North Sea, or Baihai, North Sea Park. And here is a library. The library is uh, a special building. It doesn't have a, a yellow glazed tile roof and with a grayish tile roof. Because yellow, that has some connection with sun or fire. And here is a library. Library is so have so many books inside, and uh, it must have something connected to water. So they use cool color, like this with a greenish ridge and a greenish edge, uh, eve. And also the beam, uh, the columns are in green color. That's because it has some connection with water. If it catch fire, and it, uh, well, suppose they will never catch fire because it's connected with water. Now well, here's uh, some views of the Taihe Meng, and you can see from here that's all five pavilions. Well, we can only see the four of them, but it's symmetrical in plan. And uh, it is situated amidst uh, a grayish brick uh, patio. Its pavement is made of grayish brick. Each brick, brick weighs about 35 pounds, so it's huge. And those bridge, uh, bricks, I mean, uh, not bridges, uh, bricks, were donated by all the provinces and the counties. And uh, each of the brick has an uh, inscription on that, and uh, when and where and who made that. If the brick cracks after they laid that, and uh, the one who made this brick or who donated it will get a heavy punishment. If there were so many bricks, or breaks, or broke, well, he might uh, be sentenced to death. Now, there are two uh, things uh, before this Tai Ho uh, This is a bronze lion, and uh, supposedly to be uh, used to guard the main entrance to this main hall. It is made of uh, bronze, and uh, stands 11 feet high. In China, actually, we didn't have any lions. Lions were sent to China as present from Persia, or now the Iran. And so the Chinese carpet, the uh, live lion, and of course it uh, has some artistic uh, innovations. So you can, it uh, doesn't look like a lion, but all the Chinese lions all look like this, with uh, permanent wave here and uh, you see the, the wave here and with the smooth uh, the line of the smooth body it contrasted uh, with a uh, fierce looking really it, uh, it's uh, very fierce to look at and uh, uh, used to guard that uh, gateway to the main hall uh, this portion we call the uh, pedestal or uh, also called the uh, Xumi Zhu it's supposed that it is uh, uh, one of the highest peaks of the Himalaya mountains. Well, at the present time, maybe we can say that's the Everest uh, peak. And supposed that the Buddha, uh, Sakyamuni, he stand above this uh, platform. So this is uh, a very noble pedestal for anyone, or uh, even a lion, to sit on that. So here in this portion, because uh, this measure, uh, volume measure instrument is very important, so it also has a Xu Mi Zhou. And here it also has a Xu Mi Zhou. Xu Mi is uh, Himalaya mountains. And then on top of that, just a small pavilion made of white marble. You can see it uh, actually is carpeted all the wooden uh, works of uh, uh, pavilion. Well, here's that uh, section 
at the right side the section of Taihe Gate. It is a, in section, it's a two-story building. And actually, only the first floor was used. And the second story is only for decorative purpose, because they want to make it high and uh, must have a proportion like this. And uh, so they have a double eave roof. And uh, below that, you can see this is a large uh, gatehouse. With, uh, it is uh, paved with grayish brick and huge columns and with a base. And on top of that, the cross beams and tie beams and all decorated with uh, uh, dragon on that. The dragon, actually, it's a very um, fierce, actually, there's no such thing as dragon. But suppose the uh, dragon lives under the sea. So uh, it put there, and because it's fierce, so maybe they use that to symbolize the emperor. And you have to be very obedient to the emperor. And this portion is uh, uh, elaborately decorated, unlike the Meridian City Hall, uh, city, uh, not the Meridian City, I mean the Meridian Gateway. That kind of being was simply uh, fight, and this is elaborately uh, painted and decorated. Inside of this uh, uh, gateway is a big courtyard. And just inside of the, after this big courtyard, and it's the greatest courtyard in this uh, forbidden city. And uh, there were three outer house of three great house they were called. They were all erected above a continuous platform. It was 650 feet from north to south, all made of marble. Even the pavement, the balustrade and the steps all made with white marble. And the most important hot Tai He Dian, that's the hall of Supreme Harmony, in the front, that's the Zhong Hall, and next to that is Zhong Ho Dian, the Hall of Perfect Harmony. And the third one is called Hall of Preserve, Hall of Preserving Harmony. Well, in Chinese it's very easy. The Zhong Ho Dian, Bao Ho Dian. So it's only three, three words, three syllables, but in English there's uh, more than 10 syllables to express that. Well, this is the tip, it's a tip, typical Chinese uh, architecture planning principle. With the, always with the most important hall at the north side of the big uh, courtyard. And uh, behind that, there was a smaller house. And since this is the throne hall, the uh, emperor in those days, they issued edicts or proclamations here. And uh, once a year, he celebrate his birthday. And uh, also he celebrate the Chinese New Year here and the Chinese Winter Solstice here. Uh, solstice is a very important uh, uh, festival in China. And uh, this small hall, square one behind that, is serve as an ante room to the throne hall. Every time before the emperor uh, went into this uh, main hall, he has to come here to change his uh, dress. And then he ascends to his uh, throne. There's a small throne in this place. And he reads uh, the, the message the secretary prepared for him. So he wouldn't make any mistakes after he read that in this portion. And uh, this is the uh, banquet hall. Uh, every three years, the emperor invites all the scholars to this portion, which supposed to be PhDs, and to this portion, and uh, wanted them, ordered them to compose a poem or a couplet at this place. The best one was awarded Zhuang Yuan, that's the highest order of uh, academic order. And uh, it was awarded in this place, and after that, uh, they were uh, have a big ban uh, banquet in this hall. Now this is the uh, 
elevation, I should say, of Taihe Dian. You can see that since it is the most important hall, so it has a double hip roof and uh, with three tiers of uh, terrace or podiums. And uh, this stands about seven meters. That's, uh, let's say seven meters is 30, uh, 20 something, 20, oh, 23, 23 feet high up to this portion. And uh, the Taihe Dian stand 108 feet from here to the top of this decoration. It has 11 base, and the middle one is the widest. It has uh, 37 feet wide. From this uh, picture, we can see the top ridge is molded, and it has a graceful curve. And also at the end of the eve, also it has a graceful curve, and so it is really very graceful to look at. And uh, here shows the part of the uh, balconies. There are so many balconies, and also with uh, uh, posts at this portion. Most of the posts are made in square shape, I mean sept uh, in the section, this uh, post. But at the top of that, the capital is a cylindrical shape in shape, with a cloud and sometimes with a dragon design decoration on that. And here also some spot. The spot, suppose the water was spot from the dragon head here. So here you can see that the rhythmic uh, interval, the, the of regular interval. So it shows the rhythm of this uh, beautiful water street. Now we have some uh, other picture of that. Here you can see that that uh, with uh, the capital project high above the uh, top rail, and the top rail was uh, elliptical in section, and uh, it was carved from an elliptical uh, stone, and just have it cut inside, so it was uh, cut lightly here. And uh, here we have some uh, square uh, uh, decoration, also cut in the stone. And uh, this is uh, just a panel. This is the portico to the Kai He Dian, the, the hall of the Supreme Harmony. You can see the gigantic columns from here to the top. It was made of uh, uh, a monolithic uh, timber. So that's uh, one piece of timber up to that place. And uh, in Tai Ho Dian, since every part, every joint was uh, cut into the wood, for instance, here we can see one of the joints of the beam. And the beam was let into the columns. So not one layer was used in this great hall. They're all connected by joints. And here is the particle to that. And you can see from the size of this human being, uh, the man, and it showed that the length, the height of this column. And the eve was elaborately designed. On top of that, you can see the tile, the, uh, the end tile that was in circular disc. And the end of that is plate, and there are two tiers of rafters. The outer one always in square shape, and the lower one in rounded, and all painted with uh, uh, floor decorations. And the end of that is a pretty support this beam, uh, the, the rafters, and just the end of the beams inside. And under these pearlings are a group of complicated cluster of brackets we call dogo. And that's the unique uh, feature of Chinese architecture. All the eaves were supported not only by cantilever beams, but also by this kind of cluster of brackets. And so the Chinese buildings could have a wide overhang. The wide overhang should be about one third of the height of the column. So it has a module, just like uh, Greek and uh, Roman architecture. It measured by the diameter of the column. It is measured also by the diameter of the column and also by the height of the column. Because the height of the column always is always one-tenth of the diameter of the column. 
just like a Corinthian order and a composite order. So the lower portion and uh, here is all elaborately decorated with a uh, dragon, uh, which uh, represents the emperor. Here are the plans and the sections of this um, uh, great hall. Well, at this place, we can see there's a throne, a platform to the throne here. And uh, it has uh, eight uh, big columns in the middle, and which was covered with gold foil. I'll show you later. And here, from the section, you can see the throne on top of a Xu Mi Zhuo. And then on top of that, we can see the beam, the frame of this great hall. It was not a triangular truss like the English uh, hall truss or a fig truss. It was uh, supported by the columns below and with uh, diminishing size uh, beams, each of the diminishing size. And since the space can be uh, changed, so the, the, it's easier to make a curve and uh, since we can make it higher there, because we make a higher uh, strut at this place. So it has a curve, graceful curve from top to the bottom. Now well, here are some details of this great roof. On top of that, this stands 11 feet from here to that place. It's a dragon head. In Chinese, we call that wen. Well, it's a dragon head. You see, it's a fierce looking. And because Chinese buildings are made of timber and are made of frame, and this was easy to catch fire. So in this place, anything relevant to with water is put on the top of that roof. So we have a dragon head on top of the roof because dragon lives uh, in, the, uh, in the water, in the sea, just like a submarine. And uh, in case of fire, then dragon was part water to extinguish that. And also Taiho, since it is the most important hall, so it has more uh, figures here. It's a mystic, myst mystic figures. And uh, there are all kinds of mystic animals. The first one is a prince riding a hand. And then there were dragon, a tiger, or something like that, a unicorn, and some of them, nobody knows the name of it. And since uh, it is the most important one, so it has 11 figures. And uh, only this hall can have uh, 11 mystic uh, figures on top of that. And here we can also see the tile. Since the tile, roof tile, is a unique uh, integrated portion of this uh, great hall. And uh, on top of that, there are pen tiles and the cover tiles, they are made uh, of the, the ordered, made to order. And then here is a layer, so they keep the tile in, uh, in place. And then the end tile also has a layer with a terracotta, glazed terracotta cap, so it won't get rust. And um, the end, at the end is a disc to cover that. And here is a uh, triangular tile, so the water can drip from this place down to the platform. And here are some of the uh, uh, door panels of Tai He Dian. And at the left side is a door panel of the main entrance, because the uh, middle span is wider, so they have a wider uh, door sash panels, and it was also decorated with dragon. And uh, with this, we call bass design, and supposed to bring happiness to that uh, emperor. And uh, at the side, there were uh, smaller window pan uh, panels, and it's also of dragon design. Inside of the middle, uh, in the middle of this great hall, is big throne. And uh, from the front, you can see the throne is on top of a Xu Mi Zhou, a platform, like this one. And uh, once you get inside, you will immediately uh, catch by this great throne in the middle of that. And uh, the emperor was supposed to have uh, his legs uh, bent 
and he sit on his legs, but just like some of the chairs in the lobby here. And uh, so the emperor sits here. I don't think he'll be uh, very comfortable, so he never come here very often. And uh, at the side, you can see that uh, the Xu Mi Zhou with the same, with the three uh, uh, sections. The upper uh, stick out, and the middle uh, set back a little, little bit, and with the base stand out uh, middle. And here you can see the big screen with a dragon head above, uh, above it. So the emperor comes here uh, only three or four times a year. He likes to uh, stay in some other portions. And uh, also inside of this uh, great hall, you are immediately caught by the eight uh, gold fur covered uh, columns that uh, side of this uh, platform. <coughs> now we can see that uh, the decoration of the golden cuff, gold covered beams. And here is a close up view of the column. Two kinds of uh, gold was, was used. And uh, those for the dragon is redder than the uh, the other the for the clouds design. So the uh, dragon stand out easily from that. And uh, if you follow that uh, big columns, and you can see the big covered ceiling uh, right above the throne. And this is the uh, covered ceiling. Right in the middle, they're also uh, uh, covered with gold foil, where two dragons, they were supposed to have a big pearl uh, under that. And with a uh, greenish uh, background, so the middle portion stand out uh, uh, very clearly. And um, I warn you, if you go to this great hall, and if you don't have a light with you, you cannot see this because it's so dark. So if you go inside, uh, I think you need to have a torchlight to bring that to it with you. And the halls were separated sometimes with heavy walls. For instance, here, right be uh, uh, behind this uh, great hall is a heavy uh, brick wall, also painted red with a, a terracotta beam covered wooden beam covered with terracotta plates. And you can catch a view of the house beyond and also the uh, pavilion on top of the prospect here. That's the end uh, to close the vista of uh, this forbidden city. After that, that's a smaller hall, a tent-like roof, which is a square in plan with uh, particles all around it. It's, only, it's a small hall with only uh, 50 feet uh, across. But uh, it was used as an ante room, ante hall to this great hall. And uh, the t on the top of this, that's the top of this uh, uh, hall, it was uh, uh, called finial on top of that. And it was uh, elaborately decorated. So every part of this tile was made to order. Inside of this uh, square hall is also another uh, throne, and uh, the, that's the place the emperor uh, uh, prepared his uh, lectures. And behind that, that's the Zhonghe Dian, where that's the place the uh, emperor served the banquet to the Jin Su or that uh, uh, some of the scholars. And uh, after the Zhonghe Dian, we can catch a view of some uh, very beautiful buildings. You know, this is the White Tuba in the North Sea. And uh, this is the uh, corner pavilion on the city wall. And here is a small Lama temple right inside of uh, uh, this imperial palace, which has a golden roof. Oh, it's a gold-plated roof, I'm sorry, and with uh, four dragons at each uh, hip reach. And uh, in the middle is also another stupa. You can immediately tell this is a, a Lama temple because it has a crescent moon and also a, a star or a sun above it. 
this kind of roof, we call that a rolling top roof because it doesn't have a reach and that with the two patterns to support the middle portion. So the, the tiles running around it instead of uh, have a molded reach at the middle. After Zhong Ho Dian, that's, uh, that's uh, three uh, inner courts. And here is the gateway to lead to the inner court. And that's the place the emperor uh, uh, has the, his study there. And the uh, empress is supposed to live there too. And uh, some of the decorations here is very beautiful to see. It's uh, always with a sidewall like this, with uh, covered, uh, the top of the wall was covered by roof, and uh, under that was a uh, platform made of uh, glazed tiles. And on top of that, you can see a sea of uh, gold roofs. You can see all the gold roofs here and the old portion. They are of uh, a different kind of design. For instance, here is a hip roof, and there's a gable roof, a half gable, a half hip roof, and some lintel roof here. And this is the gateway leads to the inner three palaces. And here you can see there's an incense burner and there was another uh, small gateway inside of that. And uh, at the back of the Zhonghe Dian, there was a big spirit way. This spirit way is about uh, five feet six inches thick. It's uh, 10 feet wide and how many feet long, I don't remember. And uh, it uh, weighs 250 tons. And uh, it was carved out of a single piece of marble with dragon design on that. And uh, in the old days, nobody except the emperor can uh, uh, go above this. How? Because, uh, he was uh, set in a, a seven chair. And the porters at both sides walk on the steps, and uh, he was carried uh, through this uh, spirit way to the top of the platform. So he cannot walk on that, but just carried on top of that with a uh, uh, sitting chair. So you can see here that's a dragon design. And this is the place that uh, the emperor has his office here, supposedly. So because the, it is the emperor's office, so it also has a hip roof and double eaved. And but only one tier of platform. But it was approached from that gate uh, on a raised approach with the marble uh, balconies. And uh, this is the study. Uh, actually the office of the Qin Dynasty emperors. And this is uh, one of the tablets carved uh, with a dragon head. You see, the dragon head is uh, really fierce, so fierce and formidable. Uh, so it's clear the ghost will a wild of evil spirit. And inside of this uh, palace, uh, uh, this study. There's also another throne here, and it serves as the king, uh, the emperor's study room. And uh, on top of that is a tablet called Zheng Da Guan Ming, that means be fair and justice, supposedly. Well, it was written by one of the emperors. And in the Qing dynasty, the heir to the throne's name was put in a box, and it was, the box was sealed and they put at the back of this uh, tablet. After the emperor died, or his dying, then some of the senior ministers and some of the princes, they gathered in this portion, and then take the box down and open it, and they see which name was in it. Then he was immediately made the second emperor of the empire. And then in front of it, there are some incense burners, and uh, with the stalk, with uh, her on, uh, uh, in her in his mouth, and stock in China means longevity. And uh, behind this hall is uh, called Zhao Tai Dian. This is the hall of union. And the emperor was married in this hall with uh, his empress, but uh, maybe after they married, they never see each other again. 
a man, so they married and they were paying about that. And uh, behind this house, there's a gateway leads to the royal imperial garden, which is at, at the back of this uh, palace. And um, I like this portion very much because it has some of the just uh, artifact words, like this uh, incense burner. It is after the wood fashion with uh, roof tiles, rafters, and the phoenix, but it is made of bronze, supposed to be used outside, not inside. And here the doorway is also very beautiful, with a small covered uh, uh, roof, and uh, here with uh, the very uh, sober color decoration. And behind that, uh, 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 below that, there's a special kind made of grayish brick. The five sides of the brick were punished, so they can put the bonds together with a thin um, a bond of lime. And then there was a white marble uh, balconies. And that uh, one side of this is, uh, is another field for looking animal. And this is supposed to, to guard the entrance to the imperial garden. And here's the close-up view of the gateway. This is the gateway, that uh, kind of uh, brickwork. And also inside that is a tree, copper tree we call it, with the two roots, and it's twined here, and make it uh, one uh, a single tree. So it is called a copper tree, a couple trees. Just in front of another small temple. In the, since the uh, Qing, Dynasty emperors or Ming Dynasty emperors, they were uh, Buddhist worshippers. The Lama uh, is also a degenerated branch of Buddhism. So this is the hall just behind and right in the middle of this imperial garden, which has uh, this called a white bark pine. And the white bark are very uh, uh, precious because it grows very slowly. And after a few hundred years, it grows to that size. And this, you know that from the stupa, in the middle of this uh, portion, we can immediately tell it is a Lama temple. Which is this temple uh, is at the middle of this imperial uh, garden, which divides the uh, imperial garden into two sections, one at the east and the other west. And uh, from one of the uh, temples at the east side, through the doorway, we can see another couple of trees here. And uh, it was, uh, it has, this, uh, this small pavilion has four doors leading to four directions. And uh, each door was focused on a couple of trees like this one. And uh, the, the coffee ceiling is uh, simplified in design with Felix instead of the dragon, and here is the dragon in the middle, and with the phoenix design. So that's the, suppose the concubines, uh, beautiful wives can uh, rest, have a rest here. And uh, at the west side is another uh, small pavilion. And this one, uh, it has uh, actually has a square plan, and with a brick cross plan superimposed on that. So it has, uh, uh, many corners, 12 corners at each, uh, for each corner. And also this portico has a separate roof, and that, which is a, in the middle is a square roof. And on top of that is an umbrella roof, like this one. So it, the, only the, the, the roof form is very peculiar and complicated, and also very, uh, it brings down the scale of a large roof. And uh, that's the top of this, uh, small roof. From this uh, picture, we can see that the tile, especially the covered tile, was gradually growing smaller and smaller. So the, all the tiles were made to order. And uh, at this portion, it was not uh, made of a single piece of tile. Actually, it's a plate with uh, several grooves on that. So that uh, we call that uh, reed type, just like uh, bamboo or reed. And inside of this uh, is another kind of uh, 
uh, copper ceiling. It's also very beautiful. Also, I have to warn you, you must bring a torchlight with you. Otherwise, you just you cannot see that. So, so my uh, friends in China or my colleagues, they say they went to the Forbidden City so many times. They have never seen this. Well, I say, well, if you bring a, a flashlight, a camera, you can take a picture of this. Otherwise, you bring a flashlight. And uh, here, just above, uh, behind this uh, small pavilion is uh, a small hall on top of a rock right here. And uh, this is the study for one of the prints. And uh, you can see that he studied uh, here. And uh, if he was tired, and as he, he was usually tired, he can always come to this place and uh, overlook the beautiful garden under that. And in this garden, we had peony flowers and goldfish. And I didn't know that the peony flower is the state flower for the hoosers. So I, the, the first time I learned that, I'm glad that uh, the hoosers also like the peony flowers. <laughs> and, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that someday that you have goldfish swimming in the White River. <laughs> And from some of the areas, you can always catch an accidental view of this uh, uh, the beyond. And that uh, pavilion on top of that uh, prospect here. Alice was served as a connection between house and between uh, 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 enclosed spaces. Also, these high walls were also served as a security purpose. And the master builders in those days, they paid the same attention to build design walls and the uh, uh, gateway as though they paid their attention to the great house. Here you can see that all that uh, the walls were uh, topped with a uh, gray tile roof. And, uh, uh, and the bottom sometimes was a uh, brick uh, base, and the, the middle portion was uh, washed in red. And, uh, here you can also see that from this gateway, you can see that they were supported by two piers and with a pilot stores here. Here you can also see that that is for practical purpose, so that uh, the snow or rain will never get to, to the inside of this wall. And uh, here you can see that the base of this, always that uh, at the middle portion of this uh, base, always uh, set back inside of the wall or the pier. Here is a, a gateway to another uh, side house. Here we can see that the design of this, with piers at both sides, with uh, wooden beams inside, they were covered by terracotta glazed tile. And uh, on top of that is a hood to keep the water off. And the proportion is always the diagonal of the square uh, by the width of the door. So it is, if you draw a curve from this place to here, that's the height of the door. And the inside of this uh, is a spirit wall, or a screen wall. It served the, actually the purpose was to ward off evil spirit. So it has a flower design, sometimes it has a dragon design at this portion. So suppose the evil spirit, they go to this place and they were uh, uh, ward off by this uh, wall. So that was the main purpose to use this wall. But here, it was uh, of the glazed and very nice to look at. And always, it anticipates people and arose a curiosity that you want to go inside and see what's inside of this, uh, behind the spirit wall. And here is the small temple, the, a small hall, right at the west side of the great house, the great house. You can also see the beautifully designed uh, gate uh, gateway here, also with uh, two small uh, gilded lions in front of it. This is the place the emperor used uh, as a, actually he used as an office if he comes here. 
and inside the great hall, you can see one of the hood above the, uh, one of the doorway. It's also elaborately designed with uh, this kind of beams and the panel in between the beams. And uh, this is supposed to be used as a bracket to support this beam. And uh, the column here uh, is a downward column just because they have to have some joint of the beams back into this column. And the other side, well, it's a restroom. So after he had uh, his office, he may like to take a cup of coffee. And so he just come up to this portion and have a rest. And uh, the emperors like to stay here and uh, have a rest. The category here is mom. That means dragon. Also, the surname, the family name of my wife. Uh, her family name is also this mom. It's just like Long Jiang Serpa, Nong. And uh, Nong is, uh, you all have seen that, it's a very fearful and uh, abominable and uh, formidable beast. But actually, my wife is not like that, I'm sure. <laughs> and here is uh, one of the small halls inside. You can see that all the rooms were divided by the wooden partitions, like this. And so it's uh, with the, the top portion glazed, and you can go inside from this space and to the other place. And uh, this is the place, actually. Sometimes the emperor uh, talk with the uh, empress. They like to stay here instead of uh, stay uh, in that great hall, because that was not very cozy. In fact, the empress they only spent a few days in the great hall at Tai Ho Dian, and uh, maybe more in that uh, another in the office. And uh, he stayed here maybe a, a, a month in a year. And uh, most of the time, he liked to stay in the summer resort or the summer palace. Which, if I have the time, I have the chance. If uh, Marvin permit me, I'd like to, I would like to speak to you. And this is the end uh, of this uh, Forbidden City. This is the uh, North Gate way. So you come out from this place. And that's the East uh, Gateway leading to the East. So it has four gateways leading to the four points. And this is the East one. The West one is the same as this one. And uh, of course, you have seen the South one. That's the Meridian Gateway. And this is the North Gateway. And uh, the end of this axis was closed by a hill about 50 meters high, that's 160 feet high. On top of that is a pavilion with uh, three tiers of eaves. And uh, from here, you can look at the axis extend further to the north. And there is a temple here, and uh, a dream tower here, and another uh, bed tower at the, at the end. Well, this is the end of my presentation. I would only like to say a few words more. Uh, when they started to build it, and uh, after 500 years, you can see by one glance that uh, this great building complex was a unified uh, architecture uh, place just because they use the same kind of planning and design principles. And they all have uh, red glazed tiles and red wash walls and white uh, uh, um, base, white marble base. Also, it has the, all the uh, courtyard and they follow the same axis. So after four, uh, 500 years, it still kept the original planning principle. I think that's the lesson we have to learn from this forbidden city. That's the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much.